Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the second episode of the Hydrated Gamers podcast. Today we have some fantastic Guild Wars 2 content creators on this episode. I think you guys will enjoy. Some of the content creators have been playing this game for a very long time, and there's another familiar face that has recently joined. I do want to mention that this podcast is not sponsored in any way, shape, or form. Everybody here is taking time out of their day to talk about video games that we love to play in our free time. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and get this show on the road. Thank you so much, Mighty Teapot, Vanilla Bean, and crew for joining me here today. I do want to say, uh, every time I open up YouTube, you guys have been cranking out uh, video content. It's, it's quite amazing. I respect the hustle. Uh, but I know maybe some people watching here today, maybe they don't recognize a couple of faces. So I think we can go around, do a brief introduction of who you are, where you do your content. And I'm also curious what kind of class, profession, spec, whatever you want to call it, you're currently playing and the race that you are currently playing. So uh, I'll go ahead and pick the for for very first culprit. Um, let's go ahead and start with Kruf. I knew I was going to be first. Damn. Hi, everyone. <laughs> um, I'm Kruf. I do a lot of YouTube videos over on my YouTube channel. You can just find it at Kruf. I also stream here on Twitch uh, throughout the weekdays. Mondays are Final Fantasy XIV, but uh, the rest of the day is usually dedicated to Guild Wars 2. And my content typically revolves around updates, um, philosophical questions about game design, balance. Uh, I do enjoy that area of Guild Wars 2 quite a bit. And in terms of my classes, I have to say that I oscillate between two extremes. I love Guardian, the lights, the motifs of the holiness, and also Necro. So I'd probably say uh, Guardian and Necro are my top two. Uh, but as for the race, kind of boring. Um, human, human meta. But I also sometimes dip into the pool of Silvari. And uh, it's nice. Nice. I, I, I like it. I think a lot of people actually roll human. They kind of want to... Um, you know, kind of be themselves in the video game. So I, I guess I'll go next, even though I'm the host, sorry. Uh, but uh, I play a lot of Thief. Uh, every single expansion, I'm always dipping my toes into the new Elite spec. I love running Condi builds. So, like, I was running around as a Daredevil in uh, 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 Path of Fire uh, doing Condi damage. It was horrible. I realized, wow, Rifle is not the way to go when it comes to Condi damage. So... Um, the uh, race I play is human. I, I try to make my character look uh, almost identical to me. You know, sometimes I, I kind of uh, um, add some cool outfits to him. Uh, but I have been playing the game actually since launch. Um, and I believe actually, Teapot, you have been playing not only Guild Wars 2, but I believe you were playing Guild Wars 1 back in the day. Is that correct? That is correct. And uh, I see that you're typically running around with your char uh, going around. I, he's not the elementalist. I, I, I know you probably have tons of, of characters that you're, you're on your account, but what kind of classes are you playing typically? Uh, right now I'm playing a lot of Guardian, Engineer, Necromancer. That is the way. It, Those it, are the overpowered ones. The broken it, ones. You're using this in, in strikes or uh, just in, like, if you're running around Everywhere. open world, oh, everything. Okay, okay. Everywhere. Yeah, I, I, I'm always playing, I'm playing the stuff that I think, I, I tend to play the things that I think increase win rate by the most. Um, that's what I like to do, even, even in open world, because open world can fail. You can, you can definitely die there, right? Um, and I think generating value is, is a lot of fun, actually. I think valued, uh, valued gamer. Nice. I like it. Adding the value with what class you play. Uh, and exactly. Actually, Vanilla Bean, I'm really happy to have you on board. I know a lot of people here, they Hello. played the game since launch, uh, but you have actually recently dipped your toes in the game. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit more? I know you have a couple of classes that you're playing, but do you have a favorite so far? Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm actually a, kind of an altaholic. I have I think I have bought a few character slots and made one for every class available. I think I have nine characters. But, um, oh, yeah, uh, first, I am Vanilla Bean. You don't already know. Uh, you can find me at youtube.com slash Vanilla Bean 117. Same on Twitch. Uh, and I just recently started Guild Wars 2. Recently. I actually started six months ago. And I've only, uh, I'm in the middle of Living World Season 2. I'm going through the game story. At a, at my own pace, trying not to like you know let people rush me or anything. As for the classes I've uh, been enjoying the most, um, I 
been so I love human weaver. I mean, I have a human weaver of a human dead eye and a Silvari virtuoso. I've been enjoying those quite a lot, actually. I did want to ask, I I think Vanilla Bean is, is really taking his time with the game and not rushing through. Uh, Kroof and Teapot, when you bring over like friends or even people on Discord and say, hey, come come try Guild Wars 2, are they typically breezing through the content, do you think, to try and get to end game? Or have any of your friends like really taken their time and played through the whole core story and then slowly started with the living world and expansions? I think, um, in general, I think most people tend to go for Endgame these days. That's usually the way people approach MMOs. Um, and certainly, yeah, certainly the type of gamer who's going to uh, gonna, gonna hang, hang out with me. Uh, you know, I, I'm a sweaty tryhard, right? So a lot of people, um, you know, a lot of people I hang out with are also a little, little bit on the sweatier side, right? So, yeah, like a, a lot of the people that, um, that I play with, they're looking to get to raids, looking to get to Endgame, and uh, play the stuff that's like really exciting, really engaging. Epic boss fights. Mm. Good content. Uh, in terms of my personal experience, when I try to get like my IRL friends to come and play or people that I know really well, uh, they sometimes just quit after level 20. But uh, people who come to my stream who are like interested in Guild Wars 2, um, it just depends. They kind of just take it, take it chill. You know, they ask for uh, questions about what might be the best build for them, what might be the best class, uh, depending on what they usually go for with MMOs. And yeah, you just try to try to guide people in the best way, but ultimately comes down to personal decision at the end of the day. Yeah, I, I think you guys are correct. I think um, because a lot of us are playing the repeatable like end game content. So I, I think a lot of new players, when they uh, click on a Twitch stream, uh, this is what they're seeing for the first time. Like, oh, holy shit. Like, there's like 50 people running around in world versus world. Like, damn, I want to be a part of that. I need the best gear, though, probably. And I think uh, this kind of mentality is definitely rushed upon it. So um, props to you, Vanilla Bean, for really like taking your time. I think it's uh, very respectable and something that isn't found within uh, MMOs today. Um, speaking of MMOs, Guild Wars 2 is about to turn 10 years old. Um, we're ter we are very old, but uh, it's it's quite nice to see that the game is uh, at this age and uh, quite booming. There's not even a Steam release yet, and plenty of new players coming around. I wanted to ask you guys, what, like the past 10 years, is there something that you really liked that ArenaNet has done, or is there something that you guys uh, wish that ArenaNet doesn't do again specifically? Um, I have some very fond memories from doing uh, Living World when Lion's Arch was getting attacked. Um, a lot of my friends uh, who I had played the game with, they had quit or moved on. Uh, but I was still sticking around and doing this live content. So um, I, I, even though Living World Season 1, uh, you could play it then and it, it was gone. Now it's coming back. I really enjoy that kind of content, this kind of like... Hey, you better log in for these, you know, these month and a half, two months, or else this content's gone. Um, I think it was really fresh for the MMO uh, genre. But I'm curious, what do, what do you guys enjoy the last 10 years about the game? Weirdly enough, right now. I think now, Guild Wars 2, I think, has always actually had a really big struggle with its development cycle. Um, it's always been like, oh, not enough of this, not enough of that, right? Um, but I think with End of Dragons, Arena have actually really got themselves into a position where they've they're tacking a lot of really long term issues that have been happening in terms of like the amount of content they're producing, what type of content they're producing, and also looking at key issues like actually fixing stuff that's broken in the game, um, fixing uh, like long standing pain points, looking at game balance a little bit more. These are things that are actually very recent, weirdly enough. Um, like historically, that like, the game has had a lot of problems with not being able to um, cater to all of the players um, in the base. Specifically, like I, I think the, the big dynamic was Heart of Thorns, actually. So when Heart of Thorns came out, there was actually a lot of raid content that came out, but there wasn't a lot of story content. And that's super weird for Guild Wars 2. And then they were like, well, hang on a minute. This isn't working out. Like We can't just do raids, right? Just raids. That's not going to be good enough. I, I, that's not our core audience. And then it was like, okay, well, now we've got nothing at Endgame for ages, and it's only story content. So we've kind of gone the other way now. Um, but finally, with the End of Dragons, there's actually like a really good mixture of both. Um, you know, we had you know, a big dump of story content recently, and they used strike missions to say, okay, we're going to take the story content, and we're going to make it really repeatable. We're going to make it really challenging as well. Um, I mean, yeah, the, the hardest boss in the game by far... Uh, 
came with Ender Dragons, with uh, Harvest Temple Challenge Mode. It's not even close. Easily the hardest piece of content in the game. Um, and I think that that's a pretty... Uh, I'm pretty happy with that. I think that it's really interesting to say this because I know there's a bit of negativity in the game right now. But in terms of the way that ArenaNet is developing the game from a systemic perspective, I actually think that End of Dragons is the best Guild Wars 2 has ever been, I think. Um, there, are, there are problems. It's not perfect. But mm -hmm. I really like the approach ArenaNet is taking right now. Uh, and, you know, needs a bit more work, needs to evolve, but it's really getting there, I think. I would have to agree. I think the only other time that I really remember enjoying was having that consistent raid content because it was something that was so novel for us as Guild Wars 2 players. Um, but as you had mentioned, we had an absence, a really lengthy absence of story content. And for Guild Wars 2, it feels like the story is what really anchors the game in, in many senses. And yeah, right now we, we keep getting roadmaps and we get uh, information of what is coming so that we as a player base can have at least something to look forward to and we're not left back in season three where we're left in the dark for what felt like a year a year and a half it was a uh, qu quite a dark time um but there were also some great elements with the raids but yeah i'd agree right now is really fun and uh, vb i know um you're mm, uh, I, I wouldn't even say you're like halfway through the game uh but not even close probably based on what you've played so far i mean you've made it all the way past uh, the core story you've played mm -hmm. all of the living world season one that's available right now and now you're dipping your toes mm -hmm. into living world season two is that correct i'm halfway through it i believe yeah and is there yeah. any um like i know for you it's probably fresh like personal story like the core game is very different compared to the living world do you have a preference as to how the story is or do you actually like living world season two i think the living world uh is a huge step up from the personal story and how they present and structure the story yeah absolutely i've actually i just want to like uh, quickly mention this i originally tried out the game back in 2012 briefly and um I only got into like level 40, 60, I want to say, until I put it back down to go back to World of Warcraft <laughs> for a time. But yeah, um, so I have a little more experience than just these uh, recent six months uh, that I've been delving into the game. Yeah, uh, sorry that I'm not able to, you know, chime in a little further than that. No, no, I, actually, I think it's really good How to have... You? Yeah, how dare you? You better play this game. <laughs> I, I think it's really good to have this fresh perspective in a setting like this um, because people like you are the most important. Like, um, you know, there are people starting the game today that have just made their first character and playing through the core story. Uh, and it's good to get that kind of feedback as well um, because uh, if someone doesn't enjoy that, that kind of process in the beginning, they're not going to stick around for sweaty uh, teapot uh, strike missions, you know? So uh, it's definitely something that we got to keep an eye on and i, I think arena net of course they're they're trying to make the uh, new player experience a bit more um enjoyable before the steam launch happens uh, but you mentioned world of warcraft um, i think all of us have played many different mmorpgs uh there's many that um i've come from uh recently i just started playing uh lord of the rings online just for a little bit i read all of the hobbit i'm like all right i'm in a lord of the rings vibe so i'm gonna play this game for a bit um and I can just tell there are some things in, in this MMORPG that I enjoy way more than uh, in, in Guild Wars. So I'm quite curious, um, from any of the MMOs that you guys have played, is there something that you think ArenaNet can learn from and maybe um, not specifically steal uh, and add it to their game, uh, Dragonflight, but uh, uh, I'm just curious if there's any kind of elements that uh, ArenaNet can learn from. It's a difficult it's one difficult. to talk about, yeah. actually. Because the, the, the problem is with taking something from another game is that you inherently become like that other game as well, to an extent. And that will never happen with Guild Wars 2. Because Guild Wars 2's strength is actually its greatest weakness as well, is that it is different. Mm. Guild Wars 2 is a very different game. This is what I really like about it, actually. I, I love that Guild Wars 2 is different. I love there's no vertical progression. I think that's kind of a boring mechanic. I don't like that mechanic at all. Um, but the problem is, is that 
Doing this also gives you a lot of downsides. So for example, like I consider one of the really big weaknesses of Guild Wars 2 and a huge problem in player retention, in my opinion, is actually that the game doesn't feel very rewarding um, to play. And that's partly because of vertical progression not existing. Everything comes down to gold. It's the same thing with randomness as well. Um, everything in Guild Wars 2 is very, very deterministic. Right? I think this would be the thing I would probably try and target, actually, is making loot exciting. You know, I've been playing a lot of WoW Classic um, recently, and loot in that game is actually exciting because you don't know what you're going to get, and everything that you do get is going to be extremely important. Right? It's going to actually matter for you. That doesn't exist in Guild Wars 2. Um, loot is extremely predictable. You can say, right, I'm going to play for three hours and I'm going to get this much gold and I'm almost certain that's going to be the case, right? Um, and when you get items and you level up, they don't matter, right? They're not important, right, um, whatsoever. And I think this is actually like a, I think that's a problem that not only for new players, because the game can feel a little bit wishy-washy, especially compared to other um, other video games, other MMOs, but also at end game, I think it hurts retention a little bit because there are two sides of this. One, I think it's boring. I think loot can be very, very boring in Guild Wars. But secondly, it really puts into perspective like how long it's going to take you. Like you can say, right, I need a legendary weapon that's going to cost me 2,000 gold. I'm earning 20 gold an hour. That's 100 hours. And that's stretching out ahead of you and there's nothing that's going to change that, right? You're just going to have to do it. There's no way around it. No ifs, no buts. I think that can actually make the game very, very soul crushing. Whereas if you're in an MMO that has a lot of RNG, so like random drops, it's like every single time it's like, oh, I could get, this could be the one, this could be the one, this could be the one, right? I think that can actually be a lot less soul crushing than just having like, yeah, this is how long it's going to take, do it. Um, but there are obviously like really big advantages because you might literally never get the drop as well. Like mm -hmm. it's very much a double-edged sword here, right? Because if you have a really, really rare item that you can only get from a drop, well, you get, what about that one guy who's been playing for three years and has never got it, right? So mm -hmm. it, it's, it, it's really difficult because you can say, oh, what could we learn from other MMOs? Well, you could do that, but a lot of the things that you might want to learn from might actually fundamentally change the game, right? Um, like Guild Wars 2 is, it, is a flawed game, right? Like World of Warcraft is a flawed game. Uh, and in a way, these flaws are not necessarily even desirable to fix because those flaws are kind of part of some of the really good things about the game as well, right? Um, so I think that's like a really, uh, that's not really a, a, a contribution to the conversation that I'm suggesting anything. I just think it's, Whenever you talk about this, I think that's a really important nuance to think about is that you can go, okay, yeah, we could take this from another game, but then we might end up making something else worse or taking something away from Guild Wars 2 that we actually really like, um, which is an interesting thing to think about, I think. Especially with the rewards, I a bit of a fever dream, but when they were doing challenge modes, I mean, the first thing that came to my head was uh, mount skins in terms of something to show prestige and something to collect as mount skins in Guild Wars 2 are really only accessible through the gem store and we have so many mount skins uh, in game now via those like mount licenses that you can purchase. And it was something that I really wanted but I knew deep down wasn't going to happen. And Guild Wars 2 is such a cosmetics driven game where we don't have that geared treadmill so you have to then lean on the cosmetic side of things and infusions are nice they just don't really speak to me in the way that a mount does uh, and I know playing World of Warcraft I was always really uh, excited to get the possibility uh, of a mount dropping and that's something that from Guild Wars 2's angle that I would be interested in seeing now are we gonna get it maybe not but be cool to see it's yeah, very and, and, interesting oh yeah, oh, I, was, uh, yeah. Go ahead. I, I was gonna i was just gonna to add to that and this is what this is like a really good example of that right because you know what do you know what do you know why the question is why aren't there any mount skins in content in guild wars 2 quite simple because there isn't a sub fee right yeah. and this and this is the trade-off right is it a good trade-off? Honestly, I think a lot of people would say yes. I think that's fair. I don't, I'm not saying, there's actually no right answer. There isn't a right answer to this question, actually, um, in my opinion. Um, some players might prefer a sub fee, but you have more rewards in the game, right? Some players mm -hmm. might prefer the Guild Wars 2 model, where you don't have this monthly sub, you don't have this pressure, right, on playing the game or like spending money on the game every month. But the sacrifice you make there 
is that yes, a lot of the systems are going to be monetized. For example, build templates. This is a great example. Build templates Oof. are they are, they are probably one of the very few gathering things tools where Ana have gone to um, in my opinion where Ana actually have a black mark on their record. The fact that a really fundamental mechanic like build templates is monetized, yeah, that's pretty sour. But that this is the trade-off, right? That's the trade-off yeah. that you have here. Um, if you don't want a sub fee, you've got to eat the microtransactions. And essentially, yes, yeah, some parts of your game are going to be significantly worse and less rewarding to an extent because of those microtransactions. That is the nature of a microtransaction. But also don't you want there to be stimulating rewards in the game for people to exist and continue to populate the game and to continue to play it rather than just having every single mountain skin be a microtransaction. It would be nice. It would be. Um, but I just don't really see that being a super attractive value proposition for Marine Nets and, you know, putting on my Anet hat, my business hat, I'm thinking, what's the motive? Yeah. Um, the... mm. I, I think you were going to say something, VB. Oh, I just wanted to chime in real quick. It's very interesting that you guys are, you know, interested in more uh, RNG stuff. You know, that's the uh, I'm used to World of Warcraft players being on the opposite end of that. You know, getting sick and tired of you know the massive amounts of RNG. Uh, I hear all the time that people want more, uh, want to the game to lean more towards the deterministic, you know, side of things. You know, when it comes to loot and progression. That's all. Yeah. So and, and yeah, that's a great point. And there is there's an element of the grass always being greener because yeah, when yeah. you when you're experiencing a system, you aren't thinking about the downsides of the system that you're suggesting, right? You're only thinking about the downsides of the system that you currently inhabit, right? So if we're in an RNG system, we're going to go, oh, wow, this RNG, this sucks, right? This is horrible. Yeah. You're not thinking about the fact that loot, if it's truly deterministic, can be quite boring and quite soul crushing as well, actually. Um, Final but Fantasy? There, the, there are both um there are both very very good reasons to have rng and very good reasons to not have um rng as well um and that's why i think it's important that games actually don't steal too much from each other like i, I really want that games should stay different so you can actually have a choice and not every game is just a clone of world of warcraft or every game is yeah. a clone of guild wars 2 like variety is the spice of life i, I agree I, I i completely agree actually when i i was going through lord of the rings just the other day they do have this other, I think they call it VIP, is like their subscription uh, type of model. So, you, you know, you can still play the base game if you just want to buy the expansions. Like, no problem. You don't have to pay a sub fee. Uh, but if you're looking for more shinies in the game, uh, and if you don't mind supporting the game, then obviously people are going to go uh, this route. And I'm just thinking to myself, do you think Arena is comfortable with the type of like um uh, rewards that players can get i mean like adding an infusion what Kroof said it's nice like it's cool but it doesn't tickle everyone's fancy you know it's a very niche thing when it comes to cosmetics because uh, based off of what i know like you can't change uh, what the um cherry blossom uh, petals like the color of them uh, for the infusion so it's, it's a very niche kind of reward system for that kind of thing i'm thinking can we have the best of both worlds like can we not only have mounts on the gem store? And I think, yeah, if you don't have a sub fee, they're going to be there. But can you trickle in just a couple of rewards that do kind of show off this, oh, this player has earned this type of thing. Like they really grinded. Maybe they played, I don't know, like tons of raids for this drop. I I'm wondering, maybe it's possible, but I don't know. What do you guys think? Uh, from a player perspective, I mean, they're... There are a few mounts in game when you look at them and they are more so just like a slight pattern differentiation and opening up the die channels. Honestly, just having a, a mount that you can earn in game that has more than one die channel but doesn't necessarily look different could be um, uh, enticing enough just from where we're starting at. Um, so from a player facing perspective, um, I, I yeah, but from a corporate perspective is what Teapot is uh, getting at. Opa. You do have to think about... <laughs> You, you do have to think about, like, do they want to? What would be their incentive? And I think, I mean, coming from a player, and it would be somewhat incentivized to have a, a population at endgame to make it look yeah. like it is uh, stable for people to then maybe trickle in and feel comfortable uh, spending time. So from my uh, point of view, 
I do see some value in adding some some more skins to you know reward based mm. systems like strikes and raids. I think the the reason why Arena do it this way, and I'm actually sympathetic to it as well. To be clear, right? You know, I I I, 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 I actually I'm, I'm really cautious to not come off as like bashing uh, Arena Net's business model because I actually think it is a genuinely very fair model that we have here in this game. Um, uh, you know, I, I just think it's really important to be aware of the downsides of that and, and some of the things that you can be critical of. The reason is because they don't want to kind of blur the lines between what's in game and what's in the cash shop. Because I think the minute that you go, okay, we've got a mount skin here. Everyone's going to go, wait, well, why isn't that one in the game? Why isn't that one in the game? What about that one? What about that one? That, it, it's a very psychological thing. Everyone knows that mount skins are in the gem store, right? Mm -hmm. That's, everyone knows that. And because everyone knows that, it doesn't cause like a massive clown fiesta every time there's like a crazy mount skin that gets added to the game. Right, because trust me, you know, I mean, you guys know this, right? Um, is that when you, when you, whenever there's like a really crazy black lion skin that gets added, right, a super cool, like nearly a legendary tip, there's a bit of a grumble, right? People kind of grumble about it. Can you imagine that? But with mount skins, it would be, it would get pretty wild, I think. So it makes sense why they go about this way. And to be frank, I, I think that right now, there's a, there's another few things that comes into this. This is really complicated, I think, because I think a lot of players who do stuff like raids. And, um, and strike missions and so on. I think you'll find that they're actually the least reward-driven players in the game. So like paradoxically, the players you'd be making this for care about it the least. I think the people who are very, very much, um, you know, like interested in cosmetics are very much players who um, just, you know, they're just playing for fun. We're having a good time. We're getting some cool skins. We're looking like a badass. We're having a good time. A lot of the players are like, I'm gonna full clear raids every single week. <laughs> Their happiness is like, oh, yes, my numbers. I love them. They're yeah. so good. Look at all these numbers, right? Oh, it's, oh, oh yeah. My digital PP go big. <laughs> yeah, ex exactly, right? So well, I, I think that's, that's, the that's existing part pool. of it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You could potentially draw in some more reward-driven players um, in that regard too. But the thing is, is that with that, is that they'll play the rewards and then they'll leave. Um, but I don't disagree. I think it would be a good thing to get mount skins uh, or like really high prestigious, super cool items um, into the game. I think it would be pretty risky for ArenaNet. I think it would be expensive for ArenaNet um, to do. Because think about like how much they're making on every mount skin. Oof. Oh yeah. That's yeah. tasty. Uh, the Hummingbird crew, I mean, look, look, I know people who are like, I bought it nice. instantly. I swiped it in milliseconds. I got the Hummingbird. It's cute. I want it now. And look, Disgusting. Have you, have you seen this fish? The, <laughs> like, uh, seriously, the who, fish. Does, who doesn't have the fish? I bet you I bet you have the fish. I bet you've all got the fish. Don't Everyone got the fish. I Please, need I'm getting targeted. I do not have the yeah. fish. Oh, do you have the, you have the fish? Yeah, I don't have right. the fish. Oh, I don't, don't have the have... fish. No okay, fish. I'm a fishless. Fish. I'm a fishless player. Okay. Well, okay. Well, I you know what this fish yeah. is. Yep. I'm big sad. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, actually, we should explain what the fish is like 100% because I actually I actually don't know 100%. I know the hummingbird. The hummingbird, yeah. Like, I saw the hummingbird. I'm like, damn, that's awesome. But the fish, please explain the fish. It's a oh, it's skin um, in the gem store. A back yeah. thing. Can you put and it in an aquarium? But and the, a fish the differentiation is around you. But it's not just gem store. It's, I believe, by chance with the black lion chests. So it's even, you can't just directly buy it. You have to spend keys to open black oh. lion chests to get a chance of getting the koi fish. I, okay. Oh, okay. Is that the skin you're talking about? I, I, I think so. I, it, maybe, I'm, but I, I do want to jump on this. You mentioned the chests, okay? Games like Overwatch, yeah. Overwatch 2, right? They're mm -hmm. totally straying away from loot crates in, in general. They're moving to this battle pass system. It seems like a lot of games in general uh, have this battle pass system in mind, um, which it makes sense. There's there's a lot of incentive to keep players uh, playing the game. Uh, they're not churning uh, at a faster rate. There's kind of like a um, a goal at the end. Okay, I want to max out the battle pass to get um, you know the sparkly uh, hummingbird mount or something like that. Do you guys think Guild Wars Two? could add a system like this. They already have the reward track, like the PvP reward track, world versus world reward track, like it's basically there. Do you, can you guys imagine a system like this in game or do you think it will kind of cross this line of, oh, wait a second, these skins are uh, obtainable. Like, should I not buy gem store skins? Well, we're purely just that. imagining. I'm great at imagining. So yes, I could see that. <laughs> I would personally, you know, uh 
would like to see the daily login rewards, you know, to be replaced by a reward track, actually. Interesting. Because there are days that I just can't uh, bring myself to log into the game. I'm too busy. I've got things to do. I've got video editing to do. It's like, no. I cannot log in. Uh, I, <laughs> look, so, I get pestered a lot by my viewers to log, to, you know, get the daily login rewards. I'm like, you know what? I don't want to. <laughs> that grows old real fast. <laughs> I, this, this kind of stuff is weird. Okay, you can call me a boomer here, but battle passes actually confuse me. Aren't you really? literally paying for the privilege <laughs> to unlock rewards? That, well, what what yeah, is it, that? Like, there's you know, back in my day, an you just play free. Yeah, back in my day, you just play the game and you get the reward. You don't have to pay to actually be allowed to even get the reward in the game, right? Um, I think it's a system that genuinely... It, it, I know it's really popular, but it genuinely... I don't understand it. Like, play to grind. Well, pay to grind. <laughs> like, pay money to grind. Like, we have games where you have to actively oh. pay to just play the game, so I don't think paying something to get a reward is that far off. Well, yeah, but we already have that in the gem store. You just buy it. Like, but now it's like another step further. You have to pay to then grind the game to get the reward. I, I think it, it's, it's like, that sounds more enticing than what they did with the um, Dropbox system that they were doing. Mm -hmm. Wait, you mean? Wait, you remember mean, they like, had like those before the expansions? It was like this week you get th these items, those? and the next week you'll get these items. So yeah. they've already tried to do. Well, they. I don't. Th I don't want to say they've tried to do it. They've done something that is similar in a way, but it takes uh, away the player agency and is just time-based. Yeah, I, and I guess stuff like that drives retention, right? Because it gets the player to keep logging in. Um, but in, in a way, isn't that kind of a bit antithetical to what Guild Wars 2 is about? It yeah. doesn't. The, the game is not supposed to pressure you into logging in, right? To get your rewards from your season pass, battle pass meme. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and, and I think when I hear from VB that his viewers are like, you better log in and get your, your laurels and, and miss the coins. Like, you gotta uh, do your dailies. You get two gold if yeah. you do your dailies. And like, yeah, and I when I log in, I don't really have that incentive to do dailies. Like, I just kind of log in. Like, what do I feel like ten. doing? Do I have a friend playing the game? Mm -hmm. Like, maybe I'm in a PvP mood. Uh, I think it kind of depends on how I feel like playing. So in terms of incentive, like, sure. If you want to get max gold, if you kind of want to get things a little bit easier, maybe you will be eyeing these kind of like dailies um in terms of the battle pass system i think yeah it is a bit weird it would definitely go against what arena net has about an mmo rpg um but i think you're right it it, it kind of um makes players not churn so fast and it kind of gives this incentive of you know i, I paid for it sure but I also had to work my ass off. Like I had to play, I don't know, like 10 hours of world versus world just to be able to run around with this sparkly butterfly backpack or, or something like that. So uh, I don't know if a system like that can be in place, but I feel like I feel like we're kind of in a lull period with Guild Wars 2. Like we're, we're kind of waiting for li the next living world, the Steam launch. We're kind of just in this process of just waiting. And I feel like, okay, if ArenaNet has systems in place, like the world versus world reward track, like just add um, a, a battle pass that you don't even have to pay for. Just keep players in the game and, and you know, them spending money will come with it. The more people that are playing your game, there's more chances that they're going to see the fish in, in the gem store. So and they buy the fish. Exactly. Big brain. <laughs> so you can't just buy the fish outright. Um, well, with battle passes, there usually are uh, uh, elements of a free version as well. Like most games, well, I play like Dead by Daylight. They have a free version where uh, you will gain rewards as you play. So even if you're not committing to a purchase, you're still incentivized to log in. Very similar to Guild Wars 2 dailies. But if you then purchase the battle pass, you will have that, I believe, forever. And you can work on it at your, uh, your, your leisure. And you'll gain more rewards at increased intervals and more flashy you know, in-game items and, and cosmetics. And from a player perspective, with Guild Wars 2, it feels like you're always waiting each week to, to be hopefully surprised and say, oh, I want that skin, I'll, I'll purchase it. Um, but it's that waiting period and that like, oh, I don't know what's coming. That's always like, uh. So with I, I, battle systems, it's like, I've I like knowing. I, I feel like I'm actually, go I'm becoming unhinged, right? Like, uh, isn't this literally a discussion on how can ArenaNet 
better psychologically exploit players? Yeah. Like why? They no, have this, to make money. Okay. Yeah. This, this is not. Yeah, but this, this is like. Really, That's what battle not, passes are, dude. Well, this is what I mean. That's yeah, the this system is, of battle pass. Yeah, but yeah. I, I don't want that in my game. I do not want that in my video Fair. game. At all. I do not want no one does. predatory yeah. behavior in my video game. Like, at all. <laughs> I don't find it to be super predatory. You could argue that the RNG chance yeah. of koi fish in an RNG loot box, such as the Black Lion chest, is also very predatory in nature. Yes, So correct. we have elements of that You're where I find right. it to be... Yeah. If we're talking on the line of predatory, I think that is more where if I was to choose between a battle pass and an RNG-based black line system, I think I would prefer a battle pass system. I think that's that's true. Yeah, loot boxes yeah. are definitely worse it's than battle preferable. pass. Yeah. But the black line chest, that's going nowhere. It's here. We're just like going oh, yeah. for a lesser evil. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. But honest, I take a lesser evil than the greater evil that we have now. Yeah, but I, think, yeah. I don't think it's I, if if there if there was this deal, right? Okay, we're gonna remove Black Lion chests from the game, and we get battle passes. I would I'd be down. But the thing is, that's not what would happen, right? What's gonna happen Black is you have that battle pass. You'd have that on top, and I think this is actually why Arena will be very hesitant to potentially add a monetization model like this because it will be another layer, and every layer you're getting closer and closer to the straw that breaks the camel's back, right? Eventually, people are gonna say, okay, hang on, right? This is a little bit too far. Um, you have to be careful. It's, it's a fine balance on generating enough profit to expand your company and produce content uh, for players. But you also have to be very, very careful um, not to say, to essentially alienate your player base by going too far um, and adding on so many layers of monetization that it really starts to... Um, to go down badly in the community. I mean, look, you, every time there is something that is a little bit questionable, there's already like a huge Reddit storm, right, going on there. Yeah. And there have been a few times, mm -hmm. right? I, I'm, I'm sure some of us here remember um, that Arena got blasted by the mainstream media when they added mount loot boxes. They got eviscerated, yeah. actually, over this. What? You do not want to have that happening again, ever. Um, it, yeah. It, RNG mount system. Yeah, when the first, like, uh, iteration of, of skins for mounts came in, like, the first update, and it was basically, um, you bought, like, a, a contract, and you would get, like, a random skin, uh, media outlets, uh, they totally took that, uh, up the hill, and, uh, ArenaNet was uh, on fire that week, 100%, um, yeah, um, I, I think they they've kind of recovered. I think it's it's now not not such a big issue in terms of uh, other games and, and getting rewards. I feel like with uh, uh, Guild Wars Two, like the Black Lion chest, okay, like once in a blue moon it's there. But um, I think the other day I wanted a, a skiff. It came with like a, a sail that kind of like uncovered. It looks very sweet actually, and I'm like, oh, of course it's in the Black Lion chest. I think I spent I think like fifteen dollars or something, and I ended up getting it. So I think it's a little bit forgiving. Ooh, in that's that. So they got you. They definitely got me. Um, and I want to ask mm -hmm. you, VB. Okay, you're you're a new player. I, I throw that loosely, but regardless, is there anything that has caught your eye in the gem store, or maybe uh, like build templates or anything where you're like, okay, I'm gonna spend some money to get this? Uh, I probably hold on. Let me silence my phone real quick. Sorry about that, guys. Cause it's like dinging. No worries. It's annoying me. There we go. All right, I silenced it. Anyway, uh, as I was trying to say, I probably belong in horny jail because all I do <laughs> is just grab, you know, the, you know, the outfits, you know, the outfits. Oh, those, those ones? kinds of outfits. Yeah, no, that, yeah those the, ones. The outfitness, and okay. that's all I, like I really care about Please from the gem me store. On these outfits. You know, the outfits where in they. Oh, the ones that are like encased in big bulky plates, like the Spellforge outfit. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Oh, sexy. Yeah. 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 I don't really uh, don't care about the quality of life stuff that much. Um, I did buy some character slots, and I did buy some uh, bank space. God, by the way, the amount of bank space they give you, you know, standard is just criminally small. It's like, <laughs> I can't. But yeah, I, I needed yeah. that. Um, Enjoy that. That was. <laughs> Yeah, that's really all I got from the gem store, really. Um, I was gifted some stuff, and I do appreciate that from my community. Yeah, it's. Uh, uh, yeah. I 100% I, I, I agree. I, I do. I will give ArenaNet the benefit of the doubt, though. I was playing the Lord of the Rings MMO just the other day. Uh, instead of, I think, I think you get five uh, bag slots or six or so for um, Guild Wars Two. 
And uh, Lord of the Rings, they gave you three, and it was like it was so bad. I'm like, oh, ooh, it's, how big are the bags? I think they're 15 slots each, so you fill up like within 30 minutes of killing mobs. I'm like, great, okay, this mm. is completely horrible. So yeah. You are incentivized to buy bank bank tabs and whatnot in Guild Wars, but I don't think it's as bad as other MMORPGs, in my opinion. I suppose, maybe, probably. I feel like Guild Wars 2, out of all the MMORPGs that I've uh, played so far, is the most uh, loot-heavy game that I've experienced. I, like, I'm constantly filling up my bags. I have to always deposit my materials and manage my inventory after my streams. Cause I don't want to do that in the middle of my stream. Uh, I don't know about what, how about you guys when it comes to inventory management, how do you I think, do you know, it. yeah, I don't, don't do it. <laughs> you will learn to yeah. not care anymore and people yeah. might flame you in chat, but that meme is so Doesn't old happen. and you're just like, okay. I'm like, also you have a messed up inventory too. Like <laughs> <laughs> who doesn't? why are you coming for me? I, I feel like you can tell a lot about, how people are mentally uh, based off of their inventory within video games. Like, you know, sometimes when you go over a friend's house, you're like, wow, your space is completely like super messy. And you're like, it kind of fits like how they're doing. Um, so I think our, um, maybe maybe not exactly, but I, I feel like sometimes people's in-game inventory can kind of relate to the same thing. I'm constantly cleaning out my things like all the time, like salvaging, depositing all materials, like get this shit out of here. I need it so clean. There's nothing worse than when you're like doing something and then it's like inventory full you're like damn it so I, i'm constantly cleaning it out i hate that message appearing let's switch yeah, I gears do that when it makes sense like i don't want to worry about that in the middle of a stream because i think that's just boring content it's not good it's not fun <laughs> we're not gaming yeah. it's not we're not yeah we want a game exactly oh yeah no oh, cleaning yeah. Mm -hmm. just gaming Pure. just gaming big numbers <laughs> game let's TV switch go big let's switch gears for a second guys so Mm -hmm. um, Vanilla Bean, um, hmm, this won't be a spoiler. Uh, we, we aren't talking about story or anything like that, but it is confirmed there will be a fourth expansion for Guild Wars 2. I know a lot of people are That's like, great. Guild Wars 3? But let's, let's dial it back. We have a fourth expansion to experience. I want to ask, what do you guys, what would you like to see? Like big ticket items, what kind of features are you looking to see? Or, or masteries being added to the game? Uh, I know there's quite a few ideas already on Reddit and within the community, but I'm just curious what you guys would like to see within the fourth expansion. Player housing. That is what I was they should mention add. That. The big one. Yeah, that is what they housing. should add. Other <laughs> MMOs have it. Guild Wars 2 does not have it. I look, you know what? Full disclosure, I think it is one of the most pointless features imaginable in MMOs, but they should still add it uh, because I think people absolutely love it. I know it's extremely popular. Um, and you know what? I like it when the game makes people happy. I know it would make people make people happy. Therefore, they should add player housing. They'd make an absolutely disgusting amount of money off it. And that means they can give me more content that I can, I can play. Oh, yeah. There it's you go. very, very lucrative on Final Fantasy yeah. 14. So... Especially with the system of guild halls, they seem a little outdated. Not much is like being done with it. And I think personal housing systems would offer just more interest and more income and you can decorate it to your heart's content, which you can kind of do for guild halls, but they were supposed to be a group effort. You know, just just boil it down to something a bit more controlled and, and for the player. And then depending on how they implement it, they can also like help with the social ecosystem of the game, right? I think so. Yeah, I, was, I, I, like yeah. trading thing? No, 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 I mean, just people socializing, people oh, hanging okay. out, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, people I underestimate, you know, striving. how, uh, yeah, people strive for that social aspect in their MMO. Indeed. Yeah. I, I Although, <laughs> you know, in, in Guild Wars 2, I almost feel like it isn't that social. I think this is actually something that I'd really like to see improved in Guild Wars 2. Um, and, and this is not an, a specific feature. It's more like improving the existing ones. I would love to see a really big emphasis on guild functionality and social functionality um, in the game and, and allow guild leaders uh, more control. I think it would be really cool um, if it was a bit easier to get all of your guild members onto a map, for example, instead of like a few getting locked out. I think that mm -hmm. really sucks, right? I think there should be like really cool rewards for um, playing with your guild and interacting with people in the guild. Because I think that um, it's the great, the great man himself, Wooden Potatoes. This is a quote from him. 
uh, Guild Wars 2 is playing alone together. And I think that's actually really, really true and really, really sad. Um, I'd actually level that criticism at almost every modern MMO, actually not just Guild Wars 2, it's not a Guild Wars 2 specific thing. I think MMOs over time have become very solo oriented. I would say the majority of players actually play MMOs almost exclusively solo, which is interesting, right? I'm not saying that's wrong again, to be clear. That's just I the did pattern that for of, of behavior. That's the pattern of behavior that I think we're seeing emerge. Nothing wrong with that, that's just the way it is, right? Um, but I'd love to see, yeah, games become more social because I do think that Certainly for me, that is the joy of playing an MMORPG is the fact that, whoa, look at all these people. This is mm -hmm. insane. Look, look, they're all over the place. They're everywhere. They're like ants. Yeah. Uh, especially in Guild Wars 2, which has this massive open world and massive world versus world. So I'd love to see, yeah, social structures enhanced. I, I think that's why a lot of us actually play these types of games. Like, there's plenty of awesome single player games that are like amazing to play like breath of the wild is like fantastic to play love the combat um but you don't have this experience of like you're walking and you're like holy shit is that like a giant pooh bear character walking next to me oh cool like that was really neat to see so i love mmorpgs because of that there is this kind of randomness when you're playing the game Every single time you log in, there is going to be this little spice that you see from other players. So I think player housing could be a really good way to kind of like connect people together. I don't know. Just add like a boxing ring or something in the back. So if someone's talking shit to you, like, hey, man, yeah. come to my house real quick. Like quick one on one. Big numbers. Yeah. Like, let's yeah. go. Um, so <laughs> I, 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 I would love it. I, I In fact, like. If I am wishing for anything in the next expansion, please, for the love of God, world versus world content, like just redo the map, put some like a Cantha mm. theme on it, like Eternal Battlegrounds, like I don't know, but just like please something different. Like I love world versus world, I love this big scale PvP, but we're playing on like maps from 2012. It makes me so old. sad. It's a little, a little new content to me. It. I'm, I'm enjoying yeah. myself. Vivi's <laughs> just like vibing. He's like, man, this is so cool. Awesome. And you know yeah, what? Man. Like, I love that. I think this it's is all awesome. new to me. This is all fresh. The desert borderlands are beautiful. But when you go to the other borderlands, you're like, oh, there's like no flavor here. Where's the flavor? And you're like, oh, I'm just running around all the time trying to find a fight. Yeah, that, that wouldn't be a bad idea. Uh, a totally like new Canton map. I think that would have been nice to have with End of Dragons, especially with the Alliance system. Of course, that's still in development. The beta is starting uh, today, so go and play that. But um, yeah, yeah, a little bit of competitive stuff. Uh, once they get the Alliance system settled and, and solid, yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, very Do they cool. not, uh, they don't throw enough bones often to the, PP, the PvP crowd or the world versus world crowd? They're working on a skeleton, so... <laughs> The biggest bone that has been thrown has been actually from Hardstuck in, in terms of a, a PvP, in terms of like the, the tournaments being hosted. Um, mm. But it's, I, I will say, I think it's been, when is the, like, honestly, when was the last map added to PvP? Was it, uh, uh, what is this game mode? Stronghold yeah, or something? It, it, it ain't, it, it's not, we don't talk about that. Um, yeah, it, it's, this is another um, thing where I'd absolutely say that Guild Wars 2 strength is its weakness. Um, it's an incredibly diverse game. There, it's, there's so much you can do. You've got so many different game modes and they have different balance for each game mode as well, because that's fun. Um, and this means that it's really hard for them to maintain everything. And yeah, like right now, I'd say world versus world. They're waiting on it. It's pending with alliances. But yeah, PvP is definitely the game mode that's in the worst spot. It, it is... I don't want to say it's dead, but it's um, it's rotten, life support, right? Yeah. Like uh, I I would certainly say that uh, to say that PVP is in a good spot right now in terms of player base is not that would be a lie. Um, it is really uh, really not looking so hot. Hmm. I, I find that so hard to believe. Like it, it hurts. I believe you though, but it hurts me because <laughs> the Guild Wars Two uh, combat system is so good like i love jumping into pvp matches i think it's pretty well balanced how the game is right now um but it, it definitely breaks my heart that you know pvp it's not a focus right now and at least the last expansion it was not a focus there was nothing added feature wise so um 
yeah, I I don't know. I think uh, I think that definitely needs more love in the the next expansion. Chat had some really good suggestions. Like, of course, okay, I, I do have to bring it up. Like, I, I, it it came up multiple times, but like everyone wants Tangu. Everyone wants like a new race to to uh, to to play as. Uh, what are you guys' thoughts the bird on people? The bird, I was gonna rip people. that bandaid off, but we talked about player housing first. So um, yeah, Tangu would be my uh, top of the list big ticket item for an expansion. Um, player housing is not something that really speaks to me. I like to be out in the open world uh, among other people. And with a new race, the amount of character slots I would just purchase straight up <laughs> if a Tengu was confirmed. Solo uh, power the expansion. I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> rival solo. some people. Yeah, <laughs> just go full 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 steam ahead with the Tengu train. But I love the aesthetic. Any new race, honestly, it doesn't have to be Tengu, but just something something new visually. Hmm. Yeah, Tengu. Well, that was that. It, that's yeah. New race is definitely a popular. I think it actually would be good for drawing new players in. I, I think a lot of veteran players might say, "Oh, you know, like no one cares about new race, right?" But actually, I think stuff like that can I definitely think I want make to be a clog the, Yeah, I think it can be very appealing from the outside. It can. I think a new race, like, oh, big hype thing, right? And I think that's yeah. what you know you're looking to do with an expansion is to really draw new players in. Um, uh, I, I, I mean, I'm not saying it's impossible. And, and actually, this is really funny. Um, this thing that that shaman who's like big data miner guy in the Guild Wars 2 community, um, uh, he actually posted that they were at least playing with Tengu, right? That there were actually a few models that um, he was able to kind of find here, here and there and about the place. That yeah, they they had kind of looked at it a little bit. Now that might have been because they used some new technology to actually make the Tengu NPCs in yeah. Kantha, and that's that's pretty likely. I think yeah, that's, that's pretty likely. Um, uh, that that was what they were actually doing. But there was something there. I could see them adding a new race. I think though it would be, I think it would be actually quite risky from Arena's it perspective, was. actually, because I think that would be a huge amount of work because all of a sudden, mm -hmm. wait a minute, what are you going to do? It's a lot like, of resources. I, I, I think actually, this is fascinating, isn't it? Um, let's talk about World of Warcraft. Yeah, let's talk about World of Warcraft. Sure. Wow. Um, <laughs> sure. What are they doing with this new race that has a very different um, skeleton type? Your armor is very different, isn't it? It actually doesn't change. Yeah. Like old items don't work on the what they're dragon people, like the Drakthir or whatever they are, right? Um, right. In, in, in WoW, they don't work. Yeah. And the thing is, um, Arena Net would never do that. Um, why? Well, because Arena Net, are, I know that kind of people kind of mean like, oh yeah, scuffed company, buggy company, whatever. And yeah, there are bugs. Arena Net actually, in my opinion, have really high standards when it comes to doing stuff like this. They are very exacting. The, in my opinion, the only way they'd add a new race is if it was damn perfect. It would be every skin works, every anime, there's no clipping, no major clipping, right? Loads of customization, right? Proper starting zone, right? With like lore tie in there as well. Um, in my opinion, Arena, they're very much all in or all out. They'll eat, um, They'll full commit, or they aren't super interested in doing it, right? Which mm -hmm. I don't actually mind. I think I think that actually produces some amazing stuff. Um, great example would actually be raids. Raids are ridiculous. The environment size there, it's 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 stupid, right? Like how big some of the raid and how detailed they are. The animations, the story, the voice lines, the dialogue, the, the everything, right? And also look at Living World season four, right? It's insane. The production value on that is is honestly bloody impressive. You know, I've watched some playthroughs of WoW Shadowlands, right, and the way the content is there. And it, a lot of the time, it will just be NPCs kind of standing, talking to each other. Maybe you'll get, like, a cheeky custom cutscene here and there. <laughs> but in Guild Wars 2, we were in a giant mountain, and a massive dragon surges through and eats you. And there, there's all this, like, insane stuff going on. There's rocks flying over. There's, like, laser beams and all this <laughs> insane stuff. That's gameplay. That's in the game. That's not a cutscene. That's actual gameplay. Like, ain't it tend to, they go, right, we're doing that and we're going all in. We're going to hit it as hard as we possibly can. So I think that's actually one of the reasons why a, ra a new race is actually quite unlikely. Because I think they would be unwilling to compromise on some of the things that they might have to do to actually make it realistically doable. Which is actually a perspective I really respect because I am not a very compromising person either. Like, I'm uh, of the same mind of Aina there in that regard. So, yeah, I think it's absolutely fine that they don't add a new race anyway. I think I would prefer, you know, they add existing customization options. Uh, sorry, uh, add customization options for existing races. I think that'd be a better uh, compromise. And uh... they'd have to go a bit harder on that, though. I mean, End of Dragons was mm -hmm. very um, 
good. We didn't get any for Heart of Thorns, and we only got Human Editions and Path of Fire. So they they might have taken note of that and then did it for the other races. But uh, if that's the case, I feel like if you're not going to have another new big ticket item with the mastery system, um, because we are, I don't know, in my perspective, we might be running the course of like mounts and the the ways and types of movement. So they'd have to go a bit uh, grander with the amount of customization options that mm. they would add. Also, in, in chat, someone mentioned that they would have to get the voice actor to legit do all the voice lines throughout oh the oh whole yeah. game. This poor lad. Oh. <laughs> that, Brutal. That's, that's Brutal. a full-time job. Yeah. You would get hella nodes. You would yeah. get nodules. You know what, though? I'm going to play devil's advocate, okay? <laughs> Just it, AI voice it. <laughs> Oh my gosh, no, 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 no. There's Microsoft no way. <laughs> I, it, it, would be, it would be very sad for them to add a brand new race and the, there's no voice lines. It's just like blank. In terms of amount of work, um, I, I feel like that's probably the easier way to go. But what Teapot said, like, ArenaNet does have standards. I don't know if they will do this route of, like, how Dragonflight has, you know, it's very it's Tengu-specific armor. You know, there's no other older armor that works. If they go this route, I would expect them to add the same amount of features that they've added in End of Dragons on top of this new race. Now, if they really put love and care... The poor voice actor has his his uh, voice box like removed from him as he's voicing all of the lines, uh, and they really go all all in to make sure the new race is good. Then I'd be fine with less content in in the next uh, expansion. Like I would see that kind of value, but my big question is: Do you think other players would appreciate it as much as I guess we would? A new race. I don't really have a feel for what the players want, really. But if I, personally, I would want more content. Boom. Well, I like I mean, that. Yeah, I like Huge. I a lot of us like content. <laughs> yeah, I, I would imagine so. That, but that's in what a world the game where is, they both could exist. I mean, yeah. in, in a world where we are getting a new race, the circles that I run in, people tend to be very uh, supportive of that. And they would, from the people I talk to, they'd be very excited about that. But I agree, content uh, over, over anything. Content is say. king. It is. We need content. Hand it over. Give it to me. Yes, please. Give me content. <laughs> yeah, that, and that is the thing that I think Anet really need to sort out. Because I, you know, I know that I said early on that um, this is, in my opinion, one of the best states the game has been in terms of development strategy from Arena. Ultimately, and look, I, I don't want to scare anyone, there will not be any new content in Guild Wars 2 until 2023. Almost certainly. I'd be genuinely amazed if there was. Um, because we're not done with Season 1. The next Season 1 episode is in mm -hmm. October, I believe, if I'm remembering the date correctly. Um, and we know that Enet go on winter break anyway, um, kind of towards you know, December and in a bit of January as well. Realistically, um, we're not going to be getting anything this side of the, the new year. Um, and why is that? Good question. Well, it's because they had to... Well, oh well, boy, now we're getting into the, the saga. Yeah. The saga. So the, the previous uh, season of Living World, which was called the Ice Brood Saga, it was supposed to be like a replacement for an expansion. But then, basically, mm. halfway through, Anit said, you know what, actually, let's not do that. Um, let's go ahead and let's make an expansion. So they dropped everything and made an expansion. So that oh, made wasn't the that the Saga... idea for the Living World Seasons to begin with? Well, yeah. Then they, replace then expansions? They, they, this is why I, I say this is something they need to sort out still. You're absolutely correct. That's completely true. Um, Anit has, this is, and this is going to sound really unusual, because it is. Arena have actually never, in history, in the 10-year cycle of the game... They have never actually solidly said, this is our plan, this is what we're going to do. It's always been, we, is it an expansion? Is it living world? I don't know. What are we going to do? It hasn't really happened. I guess there was like a slight stable period, um, kind of Heart of Thorns, season three, into Path of Fire. But outside of that, it's been very like, ooh, what are we doing? Is living story expansions? Wait, no, no, we're going to do expansions now, actually. We're doing Heart of Thorns. Then there was a really big content drought. And then it was like, wait, okay, we're doing expansions now, right? We did living story season four. That was great. But wait, we kind of ended the story there. Let's do Ice Brood Saga and finish it off maybe and kind of turn into some like long-term maintenance content. Oh, wait, no, actually, let's do another expansion actually like there's there hasn't been this like really big set of years where it's been okay right we're maintaining the tempo we're actually just doing something again and again and again and that's what anet is still figuring out now because they went all in on this expansion but that meant that obviously they're all they're very delayed 
on the next stuff, particularly seeing as they're also taking a lot of time on refining systems. Now, to be clear, I actually think this is the right strategic decision, hence why I praise it so much at the beginning, but it is definitely costing them, right? And uh, I do think that they need to be thinking about, okay, what are we doing next? Are we doing Living World? Are we doing an expansion? Are we doing both? What does that look like? What does the content plan look like for ArenaNet in the future? Um, they need to think about that. I concur. <laughs> Interesting. It's like I'm in a Socratic seminar back in school, and someone's just like, "I agree." <laughs> That's an interesting but, history lesson. But I do, I, I do want to <laughs> applaud ArenaNet, though. I feel like they are, are kind of uh, stepping out of the comfort zone in terms of what kind of works. I mean, everyone knows like expansions work. It's what kept like WoW and so many other MMO RPGs going for so long. Uh, so you know, even though they're kind of like, mm, "This didn't really work." Okay, this was cool, but players really didn't like this aspect of Icebeard Saga. Uh, I I like how they've kind of went out of what is normal when it comes to MMORPGs. So it can only be so different, so much though. Exactly. You have to make some compromises in order I, to stay afloat, I especially feel, in the MMO industry space. I feel like after the Steam release, though, I feel like we will have a pattern of living world expansion, living world expansion. Thoughts? You guys agree? Disagree? I, yes, that's what I think they're doing. And yeah, I, that that does appear to be what we're doing. It is pretty clear. We've already got our next expansion confirmed. Um, there will almost certainly be another season. I think, that, weirdly enough, this, I don't think the season has been explicitly confirmed. I think it's very implicit. I think, you know, you can kind of add two and two together that we are going to be getting some living world stuff uh, coming through. But I don't think it's actually been said. Maybe it has, actually. I'm no. not sure. Um, it might but, be kind of like yeah. a rebrand. This is their opportunity Ooh. to to move Ooh. away from the title Sagas. of Living World. Yeah. <laughs> Where it, it's more so just like actual saga esque like DLC rather than just like a an extend. Uh, but it's still a bridge between expansions. And no, I think they'll call it the Living World. I, I think they've got this like they established. Could, yeah. They've got this established brand setup. I don't. They, I know they eat. Look, they they even yeah, call Ice Brew Saga Season Five, right? They don't actually call mm. it Saga. Like, they call it Season Five at this point, right? Yeah. Like, they. I, I don't think rebranding is. Saying they're super interesting. I think it'd be nice doing. for flavor to have like titles for each season. Um, that that yeah. would be cool. Yeah, that would actually be cool. I think it would be really nice to actually have like a proper title for it. You know, like you could talk about, you know, you could mention Joko, right? You can talk about like, you know, the Primordus and Jaw Mag conflict. Although I think most will want to forget that at this point. Rest we, in we, peace. We, 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 we want to avoid spoilers. Phoebe hasn't played uh, certain Remember, games. I'm in the middle yeah. of season two. Yeah, well, look. Okay, you know, you're good. Don't worry. I told you nothing useful. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. that means nothing to you. You're fine. <laughs> True. VB, you, you had to buy Living World season two or to play it. Is this correct? Or am I mistaken? Yes, I did buy season two. Yeah. Uh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, season one was free. Interesting. Okay. I think they should make season two free as well, but I don't know. Do you guys think at one point they would make... For the user experience. For the new player experience, I mean. Because feel... that's when Season 2 is like... The, I don't know. It, it feels to me that Season 2 is when they start to hit their stride in the way they uh, approach um, the story and the the gameplay, the content. I could definitely see them making Living oh, yeah. World Seasons free. I think that's probably the way to go. Sure, okay. There'd be a, a couple pissed off Andes who had bought it the <laughs> week prior, but um, uh, I feel like that's just the way to go. Like, just sell the expansions. I feel like, I don't know, maybe you guys have browsed Steam, but like sometimes when I see a game on Steam and I'm like, ah, cool, whatever, like Arma, for instance, I'm like, Arma looks really cool. And then I see how many things you can buy with it. I'm just like overwhelmed. I'm like, I just what you guys mentioned i just want a game i don't want to clean my inventory i just want a game big numbers like i want to wear the, the these kinds of like crazy outfits like let's go so i think having the guild wars 2 steam page and you have living world expansion living world expansion like i feel like that's a lot to look at so i don't know if arena is listening uh living world season are they even going to put that on the steam page though in the living world and expansion stuff and all the gem yeah, store stuff a... i think they'll just Oh, really? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think they kind of have to, yeah, because um, the way Steam Why? works. Yeah. Huh. I, I, don't, I think it's way better to do that and just be upfront about it than, like, almost, like, trick people into it, you know? If you, if they go, oh, buy the game now, and then you log in it, so like, wait a minute, I have to buy all this stuff as well to play all the game? Yeah, that's not going to go down well. So I think, yeah, this is yeah. The, the way to go. Fair enough. It's already been a talking point of, like, They should just bundle it, right? They just need to uh, bundle it. That's the key. It, yeah. Especially because, like, the titling of Living World is very specific to a system of narrative. 
delivery, but in their normal marketing, even before Living World was an actual system, they always use the title of like Guild Wars 2 as a living, breathing world. So a lot of the uh, marketing has been like, oh, you get everything you need in this living world, and, and then people are like, oh, this is just the expansion. So yeah. that's popped up on the Reddit Not a few quite. times. Yeah. No new content for 2022, said Teapot, can confirm. Everyone, the game's dying. Strike no Mission. Um, Technically, Strike Mission could be new content if you yeah, really want to look at Strike Mission like 5 will be new content. And Season mm. 1. Season 1 is going to be new content for a lot of players. But, I mean, uh, there's nothing that's going to be, like, after EOD. Like, it's going to be... They're refining new player experience a lot um, uh, this year is what's, like, the big focus. Which kind of, you know, it kind of sucks a little bit for people who have been playing the game for ages. But it's perfectly fine for, basically everyone else. Everyone who's not quite as... Uh, not quite have a, much of a no-lifer as, uh, as me, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Although I don't mind it. You know, I, I, you know, weirdly enough, I actually enjoy the game a lot right now. Um, you know, I'm, uh, I've got a lot of stuff to do, a lot of adventures to go on, a lot of things to accomplish. Stuff outside the game as well. The content creation really helps, actually. Uh, working on community projects really helps kind of keep the game exciting and keeps me logging in, right, uh, to play the game. So there is that. Um, that also helps out a lot too. But yeah, no, I'm actually really enjoying the game right now, which, which is why I'm, I speak so positively about it because, you know, I, I know it's a bit of a meme and yeah, I, I think I did maybe, I was a bit early when I said, yeah, 2022, year of Guild Wars 2, more like 2023. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I genuinely think that the game is probably in one of the the best upward trajectories it's been in for an extremely long time. Um, I, I've certainly felt that the game had been stagnating for a long time during Path of Fire. But I genuinely feel like no copium, no memes, um, that we are absolutely in an upward trend for the game. Um, I mean, hey, look, the, the actual profits and player numbers reflect that, funnily enough. You know, the quarterly report just came in. It looks great, actually, weirdly enough. So that, I think this is one of the first times this has ever happened, actually. Like, Guild Wars 2 is currently, um, or the, uh, the previous quarter, is actually the most profitable game for NCSoft. Like, it beat Lineage. It beat Aeon, right? All this kind of stuff. Really? Which is oh. wild, because usually Lineage actually does really well yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, compared to Guild Wars 2. But this time, it's actually um, Guild Wars 2 actually doing extremely well um, in That's the great. second quarter of 2022. So yeah, like the, the numbers reflect that, yeah, the game is actually on the up and up right now. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that the, the design direction, direction and um, development direction is similarly very much on an upper trend. Yeah, I, I actually I didn't know. Be, I, mostly. I, mm. I, I took a look at the numbers like at the beginning of the year to see how it looked. Yeah, after PC the... game, to be clear. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. I did. That's very important. Yeah. PC yeah. yeah. PC we, we got crushed. We got crushed by mobile. Right. OK. But yeah. Like, yeah sorry. Like, continue. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I think, yeah. VB, you definitely have yeah. a, a lot of the game yeah. still to play still if you're in Living World Season 2. It's a great game. Like Guild Wars Two is the trash. MMORPG. Yeah, it's everything's horrible, trash. horrible, horrible Zero game. Out of 10. Uninstall right now. <laughs> that's what I, that's what I'm doing. I'm gonna go on Steam. <laughs> Damn. I've got, 20, I've got 23k hours. I'm gonna go. I played 23k hours. Don't play it. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> that's it. That's my Wait, review. I, I did see this though. I want to tell you guys. Well, this. Only 23. That's some rookie numbers. <laughs> uh, yeah, come on, step it up. <laughs> For the Steam page, you will not be able to log in with your account. It's only linked. You, like you will have to play a brand new account through your Steam page. So yes. I'm a bit bummed on that, to be honest with you. I was looking to try and, and and get some high numbers on Steam, but I don't know if I want to start a new account. You know, I have 21 characters I have to play on on my one account. So yeah, I don't know. Yeah, some tech stuff, right? Because they, when they, when they're going through Steam, right? I'm I'm pretty sure the way it works is that um. They have to modify the client a little bit because they need to give a cut of all of the in-game purchases to Steam as well, I believe. That's part of the deal, I think. I think the, the number goes down if you're a really big company, but I believe that is how it works. If you have in-game microtransactions, uh, Steam also needs to borrow a bit of that. So I think they have to modify the client mm. a fair bit to make that work because of the way the billing is going to be, I think, anyway. Could be wrong on that, though. It's a bit a bit of a shame. I know at least the Lord of the Rings MMORPG, uh, I played it through Steam back in the day, and uh, you can just sign in to any account. It's just like it's just the launcher that appears kind of thing. So, But I think you're right. I think it's probably just a bit easier uh, on, in terms of, of billing and what have you. I have no point to add on this. I'm not a Steam gamer. I don't understand. <laughs> do you even have Steam proof? I, are, are you being I'm exposed? a Steam gamer. I do. I do. I just use it as you know, it's but, my digital shelf space. I, yeah. I don't see it any more than that. It's not a big deal if I have to launch the game on a different launcher. And... 
But there are no there difference. are PC players that like they only play games through Steam. There's nothing else they touch. So like I'm sure, know. yeah, they're like the Steam mm -hmm. achievements that they're hunting and they want it all in one place. Yeah. I didn't I've actually... never been an achievement hunter. I'm not like I'm the exact opposite of Teapot over here. I am like super chill, super casual gamer. I like to go out and smell the roses, you know, enjoy my surroundings. Uh I'm like I, I hear about raids and strikes and you know all that stuff, which is great. But then I'm over here like, but a jumping puzzle. Oh, <laughs> they're fun. Yeah, <laughs> wait till I get to season I, I, three. I think I should maybe clarify kind of um, the, my position on this actually, because I, I am definitely a pretty try-hard player. But I'm, I'm just very gameplay. Focused, Nothing wrong with that, right? No, 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 no. no, no. I, I just want to give you a, a be, kind of better, better view of this. Like, for example, I love stuff like jumping puzzles. I really enjoy open world oh, okay. I, a, a lot. Actually, I play a lot of open world content. Uh, it, it's more like the way I approach things, right? Like, I'm hmm. if I'm going to play open world, I want to speed run it, right? You know, like if I want to <laughs> do a jumping puzzle, okay, you know, let, let's see if we can find the fastest route to do it, right? Like, what, what about this like weird route that we can go along, right? Um, oh, you know, okay. I, I, I want to do, you know, I think. <laughs> I, I was playing around with skiffs, and what we did was we that this is the boats, the Ender Dragons, right? And we made yeah, yeah. like a we made a giant bridge out of the skiffs, right? Like across a large area of water, <laughs> right? Like this is the kind of stuff I love. I, I like I like pushing the game, right? You know, and and seeing what happens. Like like I like the mechanics. I, I'm a very mechanic oriented gamer. Um, when it comes to, uh, to to everything, right? Like, you know, how fast can we jump? How high can we jump, right? Like, what about this? What if we play this weird build? Like, what if we play Heal Scourge? Can I actually just 1v9 people in raids, like, with Heal Scourge? Oh, yeah, yeah, you can, actually. Uh, like, that's the kind of stuff that, um, that I really go for. That's good. That's, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's gamer time. Last yeah. last question for you guys. At Kroof, you can Final use your... Jeopardy. Yes, you can use your imagination for this. I know you said you're good with your imagination. Yes! So. Time for imagination, everyone. Let's say, for example, 2022, ArenaNet's going to add one big patch at the end, okay? It's a patch, though, so be realistic, right? There's, the, there's going to be no Tengu. Sorry, VB, you won't be able to play as the, the Quaggan in this patch, but let's just say yeah. there's one big patch coming at the end of 2022. And then I guess let's say Steam launches January first. Even though I don't think that's going to happen, I think it's going to be the end of August uh, by what was leaked. But anywho, what do you want in this patch? What do you and what do you want? Like be selfish. Like what do you want in the game? And then also think, what do you think the game actually needs? So I've already went. I, I've already said world versus world. Just give us a brand new Eternal Battlegrounds. Just slap a, a brand new piece of paint on it. I am happy with that. I feel like this is doable maybe in a patch if you focus for a couple months with, with a large team. Uh, but I, I, I'm curious uh, what you guys want. And be selfish, like really. Um, if you want 100 skiff skins, that's that's totally feasible as well. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the game doesn't have any outfit templates, right? Or like you can select Ooh, star lock. different outfits. Uh, what? Wait, you mean like style lock? So in other words, you can, you can change your gear without changing its appearance? Uh, no, just like change appearances without having to, uh, constantly, uh, spend transmutation charges. So you have like one outfit and then you can switch to another outfit and then you switch to another. Oh wait, okay. well, maybe not can... outfits because in this game kind outfits of. are an, an actual, uh, set of, uh, clothing. I you... mean like change your wardrobe. Hmm. Yeah. You can do that with build templates. So and with build you templates can yeah. do that. Yeah. Which is only really not I need ideal. A combo. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, and oh, hey, hey, look, have fun with this. Uh, legendary items, okay, so get on that grind. Um, legendary items don't require transitation charges to change, so there is that slight advantage. Mm. The, the quality of life is there. Uh, it's going to cost you, um, actually, I guess it's not that bad, right, for like full legendary armor. That could be a lot worse. That's what that's going to cost you, is yeah, like bad? 3k gold or something like that in, in that region, I think. Like, that's not, it's not that bad. It might be less than that, actually, now. I don't know. Could be a lot. That could be a. Trust me, it could be a lot worse. Get those raid right? sellers yeah. going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I I like a, v, a VB's chuckle though when when uh, Mighty Teapot said the three K gold. Are you a bit overwhelmed, VB? Do you think you can do this? Uh, you can. I only have like a hundred gold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not bad. That, Good start. Look. Oh. Yeah, that's not horrible. It could be a lot worse. Trust me. I mean, I, I, mean, I, have, I have 157 gold right now. I gave away all my gold. I'm sad. I'm poor. Oh, wow. I'm impoverished. This is so I'm sad. Oh, I have, I have yeah, it, it is sad. Yeah. 
Like, 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 here's some scary numbers. I just spent 120,000 gold on a PvP tournament recently. Sheesh. Yeah, it was horrible. Uh, it, it was soul crushing. But you know what? It was worth it. I'll do it again. <laughs> and I'll the do it again. Yeah, here's a fun one. Biggest tournament they ever did was 700,000 gold. Really? Shaman didn't get a million. Unlucky. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I think you got to top it now. for that. Yeah. yeah. 20, 2023, the year of uh, one, 1 million gold or for PvP I'm tournament. Like, that would be your patch. What like, is just rich? You get granted a million gold. How, how much how, gold is... Oh, how much gold, how much gold do you I, yeah how much gold do you need to be uh, to have in order to be considered a high class <laughs> I'd say society. It, 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 it would be in terms of your account value rather than how much gold you have about how much all the stuff in your account is worth I would say uh, I, I'd say like definitely good is like a hundred k you're getting to be like okay yeah you're a bit of a high roller at quarter of a million three hundred thousand plus gold oh wow okay that's when that's when I'd, you I, I have basically everything in the game i have full legendary for all of my characters and my account value is three hundred and fifty thousand. um uh so yeah that's probably that's pretty darn wealthy there are some players who are absolutely up there kind of looking at a million gold um in terms of their worth you know some one mil two mil even so yeah i'd say when you're getting above 200k 200k plus yeah you're you know you're uh you're pretty rich at that point you enter okay. a new tax bracket. <laughs> yeah. I'm dirt poor. <laughs> That's what I got out of it. <laughs> you got to start somewhere, though. Features, though. True. What what but, would yeah. we like to add? If we're being real selfish, um, just like a, a, a earth-shattering, really shake up the balance and, and the gameplay uh, of the game. I, I've really been wanting more from it, particularly from a healing perspective. With Spectre, I was really interested with ally targeting systems, and I don't want the dynamic combat of support where you have to do a skill shot uh, or place an area of healing. I want that to stay, but I think single target abilities are kind of a, a fun and interesting idea to play around with uh, in certain scenarios. Now, um, at higher level play, it, it is a little bit less ideal, but I think it's just kind of a flavorful, fun thing to just see. Um, but yeah, balance has been a, a topic of uh, a lot of discussion recently. So I, I'm always on the lookout for more balance changes and see where they're yeah, going to take the game. Yeah, I heard people got mad over the most recent balance changes. and like, damn. Yeah. Group gave the right answer. Um, and that is good because it means I can give the other answer because that means I can oh, be perfect. really greedy. See, this is good. <laughs> yeah, no, they, uh, just to kind of echo that. Yeah, you, you're absolutely right, Kruf. That is the correct answer, in my opinion, or the, the, or the highest answer value in my opinion there was a huge amount of momentum after ender dragons everyone was like whoa this is so cool it's so hype it's so exciting i love this uh, and then the balance patch came and it was the the confident this is like a super important thing player trust right player trust utterly evaporated it had been built up like the new game director had great rapport with the community a guy called Grouch. Um, everyone was like, oh, this is so cool. New management, this is amazing. This new arena net, we're having a change. Expansion was really cool. Story was really fun, right? New maps are really fun. New specs are kind of fun, right? Um, and then the balance patch came and people thought, oh wait, no, nothing's changed whatsoever, right? It, it, in fact, it's worse, right, um, than before. And it completely crushed the morale of the community and the, uh, you know, the, the the goodwill like the good faith that the community had and confidence they had in the company so yeah addressing that is that needs to happen i mean mm. that is that's not like a wish list that in my opinion is mandatory it is not optional they have True. to do that um otherwise we're we're never going to get out of this like hell hole position that we're in currently uh where people are just like grumbling constantly and quite rightly so as well and hey apparently some notes dropped during this podcast that are actually really spicy so mm. be sure to check those that's out that's the little um, sneak peek i don't think they're that spicy yeah they are very spicy uh but oh. for, for my thing <laughs> I, I i i've got to i can't just like uh i can't just like hog the spot love it too long the thing that i would probably do is um is actually polish the rest of the game um so we actually saw them do a little bit of this already like by re revamping some of the core world bosses like the worm mm. uh, shadow behemoth and so on i Good would do answer. a lot more of that because um uh, vanilla bean you were talking how um you thought whoa season two this is a huge step we're hitting our stride um you're going to feel that way about season three and then you're going to feel that way again with season four almost certainly actually <laughs> okay all right i'm looking um, forward to that 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I would actually go as far to say that you'll probably feel that way about the quality of the open world maps as well, right? You're going to go, mm. wow, this is amazing, right? When, you know, I think when you play Path of Fire for the first time, you go, wow, this is genuinely breathtaking, right? And, and when you get to Heart of Thorns, you go, whoa, this is, this is scary. This is oppressive. I, I'm lost. I, this is insane. This exploration is crazy. And then when you go to Ender Dragon, it's kind of a bit of both, right? Uh, it, it's a visual feast, right, uh, with what it is. And the, well, I mean, no, no spoilers, but you've got to play the last map. The last map is genuinely spectacular. It is one of the best pieces of content I have ever seen in an MMO. It, it, it's really well up there. Where It is spectacular. You're setting the bar pretty up high. Oh, yeah, no, no. Honestly, <laughs> I, I actually think... I think I'm genuinely being conservative, actually. It is spectacular. Music on, audio on, dialogue on, play through that map. It is, it is remarkable. It is a masterpiece, right? Uh, and that's what's ahead of you, right? And, and it, it, that's not, it's just not, not just that map, right? It's a lot of stuff um, you're going to be okay. amazed by. Because, yeah, you, you're absolutely correct. Your assertion is correct here. Uh, Arena did hit their stride. They refined. They've kept doing this over this. They've refined more um, their, the way they tell stories, the way they have content, story content in, in, in the game, right? Like the way they design maps, it's all evolved um, the way it has. And I, I think you're going to be really impressed. You're going to, you know, you're going to, you will be amazed. And I'd like to see them do this because, um, yeah, particularly in the core game, there are some things that are not bad, but the new game stuff's kind of better, right? <laughs> Uh, uh, you know, the, the new arena stuff kind of better. So, and I, I love the, what they did with the worm and so on. So I'd like to see them actually um, update old systems, like keep updating dungeons, keep updating fractals, bring them up to update date. Update right? like content. Bring, update old content and old, or did more specifically. Dungeons? Update Zytus, Old please. systems, specifically <sighs> old systems, right? Because I think updating old content is very poor value. A uh, great example is actually World yeah. of Warcraft Cataclysm, actually. Mm. Uh, the, devs, okay, yeah, you're right. the devs themselves yeah. said it wasn't worth it. They revamped mm -hmm. the entire world, right, to try and address the whole, wait, hang on a minute, we've, we're, we're four expansions deep. It's like 85 levels now. That, that's quite a lot, right? They tried to say, oh, the entire world is new. How crazy is that? Wow. Um, but that didn't work. It wasn't really worth it. And I think it's I a very... Think they have to go that far. Well... I think the other element is that it, it's, it's a, a tough value proposition when new content is always going to be what drives your game forwards, right? To go back, you essentially create a drought, which isn't good, mm -hmm. right, from like a business True. standpoint. So then they have to be very careful with this, which is why I think looking at old systems and trying to create stuff that can be applied to old content in kind of broad strokes is the way to do it, is by updating the actual mechanics behind it. Um, you don't have to like rework all the maps, right? Just make the stuff on those maps a little bit more systemically interesting and up to date with like the modern game yeah do you think that would uh be classified as enough of a new change for existing players to not feel that drought or are you comfortable taking that that l as the kids say these that's days? where we are right now and yeah i'm comfortable with yeah that. that that's the current state of the game we're basically eating the fact that um we have this content drought after eod and ain't you know, focusing on new players you know systems and stuff like that and they're you know thinking about steam release to grow the reach and the um you know the you know the reach of the game and stuff like that um so yeah yeah that's i think that's exactly where we are right now and i think it is it, in my opinion it is the correct decision i guess it's like not the selfish play that i'm supposed to be doing right now but i believe it is the best for the game which ultimately will be the best for sure. me um down the line i concur I I I hundred percent agree. I think uh, taking a look at like the the boss reworks, like uh, Shadow Behem mm -hmm. Shadow Behemoth and the the worms, they look fantastic, and uh, it, it definitely uh, helps with the new player experience to kind of give them that first wow factor. You know, you, it'd be nice if they took this clip of you talking about how the game gets progressively better and better as time goes on, and just like slap that onto the Steam page. I think uh, people yeah, for would a be... lot of gamers, first impressions are everything. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Which is which is why I find it so fascinating that you said that, um, Vanilla Bean. That was that's, that's a really good point, and that's something that Ain't need to know mm -hmm. about. Super interesting, um, because I, I think you mentioned that when you played the game first, you kind of were like, oh, level forty, were like, ah, eh, you know, eh, I'm gonna, gonna, gonna yeah. go play well, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go play well. And this is like the really scary thing about games, particularly MMOs. It's not good enough for your game to be good. It's got to be so good that it's worth dropping your other game for, right? It's, it's really cutthroat. No MMOs, one wants to play a right? dying game. If, especially exactly. if it's an MMO. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah it, it's got to be really on it. You've got to be so good that other players are going to quit their game to come and play yours that they've maybe put like hundreds of hours into. So first impressions and really having that wow factor in the early game, really, really key. Um, and, that, and that's why I think, you know, it's important to kind of say, oh yeah, you know, the, the, you know, it, it's weird though, because you it's saying like, oh, just play through all the content, then it gets good, right? <laughs> that's a bit of a weird thing to say. I think it's better to say, yeah, we just made the game really good. And you're it's gonna kind love of a standard in the MMO community, though. Like ever since I really got invested in this, it's like that I like has that. been. I don't like that they, you know, want to bring up a badge of honor. It's like, yeah, I've wasted this much time. <laughs> yeah, and then I can finally enjoy myself. But I, yeah. the modern content is at such mm. a, a high level that I would love to see the earlier systems and the earlier boss encounters, especially dungeons, be something that is more incentivized for players to do. Because it's it, dungeons are a whole area of content that some people never even interact with or True. like miss. I, yeah, the first impression is extremely important. And that's kind of why I'm a little nervous to, as to why, um, or the possibility of Steam releasing sometime soon. Because I don't know if it's, I don't know, it's not as strong of a first impression as I would like it to be. And I know that it can. What else would you change? About the starting experience? Yep. Um, better tutorialization. I think the tutorialization in Guild Wars 2 is yep. uh, lacking. And at maybe mm -hmm. at a, a time that was uh, a, a pro is that it's a game that doesn't hold your hand and allows you to experience that journey. And to an extent, it is a good thing to allow players to have that freedom. But especially at the start, a little bit more structure to tutorialization, teaching players roles, how to move, how to engage with mechanics, um, where to go, who to talk to, to find more information, um, hotkeys. Oh, there's there's so many systems within Guild Wars 2 that have been grown over the years that I, I think it's worthwhile seeing a bit better uh, of, a, of a starting experience for that. VB, when you jumped back into the game, you played it back in 2012 for a bit. So did you find it any moments overwhelming when you were playing the game? Like, were you like, I, I kind of wish to learn how to dodge roll, or I don't know? Uh, yeah, probably. I think the thing that really threw me off was the very first dungeon. I think it was Ascalon Catacombs. Yeah, I vaguely remember being incredibly overwhelmed by, you know, all sorts of new things that was presented in that. There was, like, uh, traps or... Um, mm -hmm certain mechanics that the <laughs> earlier stuff didn't, you know, teach me. I, uh, yeah, there, there were definitely, you know, some things sprinkled here and there that were a bit much for me. I remember initially. you, I remember watching the video of you playing Ask Alone Catacombs. I, I, when I'm working, I have YouTube content up, and so, like, I, I, the videos of, like, Kroof, Teapot, and, and you, Vanilla Bean, like, playing the game, they, they pop up on, on my feed, which is nice. But when you watch the cutscene... Thank you, Algorithm. Yeah, thank you. Danke schön. When uh, the cutscene for Ascalon Catacombs, like he slams the sword down and then the, the ghost appears, like your eyes were so white. You're like, oh my God, this is fantastic. <laughs> and I was like, wow, this is so cool. He's enjoying this content. Because back in the day, I, think I felt the way the that same they do way. some of the cutscenes are so beautiful, dude. That's, uh, a, they make some really beautiful paintings, I'm just saying. It's uh, I, 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 I really uh, enjoy uh, the cutscenes, and I think I'm, I, I said this in the last podcast, I enjoy the personal story uh, side by side um, appearances where there's like concept art moving in the background. That got a lot of shit on Reddit. I don't know why. I think it's still cool to this day, uh, but, but I digress. Uh, I, I think uh, the base game, I think, is good, but I think there's things they can add. Like there's so much open mm -hmm. tutorial space in Queensdale that they can just throw the, um, um, what is the base map for End of Dragons? I, I completely forget. Um, Saitong. Saitong, yeah. They they can add that that kind of like heart vendor where you learn about like break bars and stuff like that. I think it would be really cool to see mm -hmm. in game. Break uh, bars, yeah. Uh, my chat had to teach me that. That's a, that's a thing that needs to be taught to players early on. Anet. It's his, always the break bars. His, hey, what are you doing, Anet? Get on it. His chat <laughs> had to teach him. It's so sad. Oh, but uh, Yeah. <laughs> Ugh. This is, uh, well, you know. Do you have anything you'd like to I see? I didn't even know that I move? need to start reading the little descriptions beneath the nameplates as well. They, um, yeah. True. They tell you things. Sometimes yeah. they don't, though. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> yeah. things, things I would like to see, uh, just from playing other MMOs right now, someone said in chat, like, 
I want to be able to examine a player and see their gear, their status, and whatnot. I feel like yeah. that, would, that would do... Why is that not a thing? That would do... Think about this, right? New player runs by. He's wearing, like, some sick shoulder pads or whatever, and you inspect him. You see this item. Okay, maybe it takes away the social aspect of, like, where'd you get the thing? They can go straight to the Wikipedia page and be like, this is what I have to do. Shout out to everyone who contributes on the on the wiki. Like, it, it's amazing. I feel like having an inspect function would be awesome. I feel like that would do so many wonders for the game. Uh, and I think something as easy as that I, w I would like to see in game. I feel like the new player experience is actually um, quite nice in my opinion. I feel like uh, there's not a lot they need to add. I feel like a Steam launch, is it perfect? No. But I feel like uh, the game is already at a good state. I believe actually you, uh, you get raptors now. I, I was leveling a character. Yeah, and I just got mine. Interesting. Mm -hmm. But you're 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 max level now, am I correct? Well, yeah, I'm max level. Um, I didn't get my raptor immediately. I had to level a new character to ten in order to get my raptor, which was a little odd, but it is what it is. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like they should add the raptor, of course, uh, an intro and inspect element uh, and tutorials. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's what I would like to see for the base game. Inspect. <laughs> but it's different to that. Ooh. <laughs> Let's hear yeah, it. Let's hear it. What's on your? Let's pick your brain. What about inspect? What's, you dislike what's going on or like? In that well, noggin of yours, teapot. I mean, I, I don't mind uh, gear inspect. In fact, I think it would actually probably be good for the game. It would be a net benefit for the game. But I, I think that uh, Arena Net would probably get devoured alive by the, the game's community if they ever added anything like that. <laughs> Do you feel like if you can inspect like armor? What if it's just like the name, not not the stat type specifically? Well, isn't that just useless? It'd just be more of a cosmetic option. Yeah. Um, there's a good side to inspect because then you can, you know, inform you them learn. that, hey, you might not be running the best gear or, oh, like you have a green. Like you should maybe like upgrade that. Oh, um, no, I am pro gear inspect. I am. Yeah. I think gear okay. inspect would be a huge net positive to the game. It's just that I don't think it's very likely to get added to the game. Yeah. <laughs> Are they worried that it'll bring toxicity into the game or something? Yes. Even I, though toxicity already, like, it, oh, it's, it's kind much. of a, it's an argument that's like, it doesn't really matter because there's always going to be an aspect yeah. of toxicity. And yeah, we can do everything in our power to try to avoid that. But it's like, some of these systems are actually very useful to teaching people. And it's yeah, not all about the toxicity. Yeah. So the, th the thing is, is that it's kind of like indirectly caused toxicity or community created to or like, um, or directly created toxicity. Yeah. The reason why um, people wouldn't like gear check is because right now, um, is because it would essentially be in, in a lot of players' minds, game mandated toxicity. In other words, there is a system in the game that allows you to exclude other players, right? Right now, that doesn't mm. really exist. Um, but uh, currently, people are like, well, the only way you get excluded is if other players do it. It's not the game doing it, it's the other players doing it. And I think that that it's a distinction, and honestly, it's, a, it's actually not a very productive distinction to make, in my opinion, because I actually think the net toxicity is much higher with not having gear inspect in the game, because now it's impossible to actually, in any way, gauge players and go, are you running the right build? They can lie to you, right? Um, you can mm -hmm. say, do you have the right gear? They can just lie to you, and there's nothing you can do about that. Right, and that is actually much more toxic. It creates more toxicity because players don't trust each other. Right, like the community. Th there's a reason why stuff like the looking for group actually struggles to be very popular in Guild Wars 2 for endgame instance content. Is because you can't trust other players. They're going to lie to you. I um, I actually very rarely do um, groups with people from my stream actually anymore um, because a lot of the time I'll say. I'm going to do this challenge mode. It's a hard boss, guys. It's hard. You should really know what you're doing. Please really be very experienced. And then three people, four people join. They've never done the boss before. Ever. Mm. And it's like, okay, well, I'm never doing that ever again. GG. Right? Dropping and the, poisons and Slothosaur. Yeah. <laughs> and the, this is actually like a really big issue that the game does face is that um, like it, it's a bit of a paradox, right? In the quest to um, in the quest to make the game very open and non gatekeepy, they've made it extremely gatekeepy. Now, a lot of raiding and like end game stuff, you don't do it in the game. You do it off platform. You do it in Discord. Why? Mm -hmm. Because doing it in game is insane, right? You're, you're going to just have a shit time, to be honest, right? It's not going to be fun um, because you're just going to be, you know, 
you're going to deal with people who are going to lie to you, right? Um, and that's just not fun. It, it's it it's not it's just not respectful, right? It's not fun to not be respected by other players. Um, you know, it's very much a two way street. I don't think it's right to you know like flame people and call people trash or like mega gatekeep people by saying, oh, you know, you're only allowed to join if you've killed the boss ten thousand times and you're passing within the top one percent. No, that's stupid, right? Like you know, that, you know, obviously not, right? But I think you should be able to set reasonable expectations that you know players have the right gear that will work in an encounter or they have a build that makes sense or they have some experience on the encounter i think that's very reasonable i think it will be difficult to argue that that's an unreasonable thing to uh, want to have in the game but yeah like so i'm pro gear inspect but i just don't think they'll ever do it <laughs> so let's find I'm pro the gear go for it Kruf. i was gonna say i'm i'm pro gear inspect and also pro uh gear gear level or like gear point system as we don't have like a, a further treadmill, like I wouldn't, I've just been thinking about recently, you know, like World of Warcraft, you have item level and stuff. I wouldn't mind that in Guild mm -hmm. Wars 2 either. I, I, I'm very scared if they add something like this because then it like goes against what the philosophy of Guild exactly. Wars, you know. Yeah. But yeah, mm -hmm. I do like it. Let's find the best of both worlds. I was thinking about gear inspect in terms of like cool shoulder armor or whatever. And then you can see how to get it in game, and now you have now you have a goal, now you have a personal goal kind of thing. Uh, why don't we have the best of both worlds? Someone said in chat, they're like, I always have to ping gear every time I do a raid. Like, there's no different kind of thing. They should just add it. I say, when you're in a group setting, like dungeons or uh, even story instances or strikes or, or raids, it should always say the stats of your gear so that people can see. When you're running around in the open world, you can inspect people, but it just shows the name of the armor that you're wearing, and that's it. If you want to have stats enabled where it shows off, cool, like more power to you. Um, but as default, I feel like running around in the open game, not getting uh, harassed by random players saying, like, you should be running this stat type. What the hell are you doing? I don't think that's something that's needed. But I feel like if you see someone wearing something very cool and you want to figure out how this player got it, um, an inspect element would be great to have in the game. So Show um, me how I can get the sparkly sword. Exactly. But yeah. v VB for you would not be sparkly sword. It would be like, show me how you got that outfit. I, I'm curious how you got this outfit. Awesome. I feel like we've covered a lot so far. You're not wrong. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> gotta, gotta be honest, you know. Gotta be honest on this podcast. Going on. I feel like um, the biggest thing that we talked about was that VB learned about break bars through his chat, which should be like the biggest indicator for Arena Net. I'm sure oh, it's on their radar. Um, but uh, uh, props to VB's chat. Um, any last closing remarks or anything else on your guys' mind about the game currently before we wrap this up? I want to be respectable about everyone's time. Um, yeah, I like I, Guild Wars 2. Me too. I, I really it. do. Yeah. Uh, I, and shocking news. And, and, and even though I've been very critical, and I often am very critical, uh, my view on the game is extremely positive, And I hope that everyone has kind of, I hope that's shone through here a little bit uh, to everyone listening. Uh, and everyone here as well on the panel. It's been lovely to talk to everyone. I absolutely felt, you know, excellent to be brought onto the show. Anytime I will be summoned, I will materialize <laughs> to speak about Guild Wars 2. Okay, you can't stop me. And now, yeah, you, you, you can't get away now as well. So unlucky. Um, is, yeah, you're trapped. This is, a, this tra is good. He uh, just like uh, uh, disappears through his green screen and then just reappears. You've summoned me for more talk. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've been summoned. I have arrived. Yeah. Any... Uh, any oh. Upcoming videos or uh, Hearthstuck events that uh, uh, you can uh, kind of uh, give us a little sneak peek oh. at before you go. There, there is one thing actually that I'm planning on running pretty soon actually, and I, and I think this actually, I, I'm, I want to target a lot of the issues in the community that I think we can fix, right? Because there are some things that Anet can fix, right? And there are some things that we can have a bit of a crack at and see if we can make better. And one thing I really want to look at is uh, players in leadership positions, specifically players who are going to be the type of player to make groups, right, um, and to populate the LFG and teach other players. So I'm going to be running a challenge soon, uh, and there'll be lots of prizes, maybe even stuff from Aina if they if they're interested. Okay, who knows? Not confirmed. Not confirmed, by the way, disclaimer. Um, but I want to run basically a commander challenge where people that I'm going to challenge people to run as many groups as they possibly can, teach as many new people as possible. I probably trying to coincide a little bit with the steam release a little bit. And if you win, you'll probably get a legendary weapon. Wow. Insane. How the hell do you yeah. win? Yeah. Let's go. Well, you have to just, you, whoever, basically, I, what the world will be is I'll probably do like the top 100 will get something or maybe the top 50 people who do it. 
depending on how many people I think I'm going to get. And there'll be like gold starting at, you know, like rank 100 or rank 50. And it will scale up all the way to probably a legendary weapon. Yes, and by the way, I, I am actually planning that for every game mode, by the way. So I'm planning to eventually do that for PvP, for making automated tournaments, or maybe just duo queuing with, like, random people. Like, who can duo queue with the most random people in PvP in, like, a week? That's big, you know? That's huge. <laughs> That's <laughs> cool. I like it. It's such a strange uh, and, yeah, competition. Uh, yeah, it, it is. Isn't that fun? Uh, like, it's going to be bizarre. Um, and, like, how many like how many times you can lead uh, in World Buses 1 and stuff like that, for sure. And even better, you know what? Because look, I, I'm, I live by my own standard, my own example, right? Uh, I am actually planning on doing probably one of the most unhinged challenges I've ever attempted. I will attempt Touching to grass. complete Dragon's End. No, not, not that, I'm not quite that far <laughs> gone yet. Um, I will attempt to do Dragon's End, which is the final map in the entire game, 1,000 times in one week, maybe one month. Okay, mm -hmm. one week might not be, uh, it might be... Uh, yeah, we're going to have to do wellness checks on you. What in the world? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Cool. You need to see a therapist. Mm. There's, some, uh, there's, some, there's some pretty cool uh, events then for uh, Hardstuck. And uh, I'm really curious to see how this uh, um, tournament goes with helping new players and whatnot. I think this is a really cool incentive to uh, bring experienced players into these starter zones and kind of, you know, be uh, teaching people how to how break bars work or something like this. So uh, cool. Um, I will make sure to leave Hardstuck's uh, uh, website, which is also very cool. True. Just... What's that? True. True. I said facts. True. <laughs> Big facts. Yeah. Proof. True. Proof. 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 Oh, hello. Tell us about what kind of content you have planned and uh, where we can find your content. Uh, well, more content. I mean, we had a balance patch preview coming out, so I might make a little bit of a video on that. Um, but uh, high level stuff. Uh, I am going to be a part of the competition known as Unleash the Feast with two other arena mm. partners, Emmy and also Rook, and we will be competing and cooking food uh, on a Guild Wars 2 inspired cooking competition, and we're going to be fighting out for $1,000. I'm just nice. kidding. Nice. No, there's not oh. a prize pool. I wish oh. there was. But um, yeah, more stuff coming down the pipeline. Thank you so much for having me. This was a really fun conversation cool. to reflect on Guild Wars 2 systems. Awesome. I hope uh, no quaggins are going to be baked during uh, your cooking competition, but I wish you luck. Uh, How did you know? Uh, I don't know. Just Damn. a lucky guess. Okay. Uh, well, and last but not least, VB, it, thank you so much for coming on. I, I know I, I kind of no put you uh, out of the frying pan and, and into the fire when it comes to uh, experienced players. And uh, uh, your new eyes, I think, gave a good perspective. But uh, what do you have yeah, on the I'm pipeline? sorry that I couldn't chime in more than I could, but I'm glad to be here. Not a problem. You have a Living World Season 2 to complete, and uh, I think you're just going to keep playing uh, through. Is this correct? Or do you have, like, do you have... Yeah, I'm chilling. I'm vibing. I am... No, I'm definitely going to be doing the World versus World beta thing with my guild. Uh, we'll be do, doing a little bit of that. I'm going to continue doing as much as I can of the Queen's Gauntlet and the current uh, holiday event that's going on right now. And, yeah, just more Living World Season 2 stuff. I'm going to keep pushing through until I finally reach uh, Heart of Thorns. You're in for... Not it quite a treat more excitement more surprise faces there, more pog faces yeah there's a there's very small um enemies in, in heart of thorns that you should definitely just keep an eye out um, don't underestimate i've them. seen the meme the memes okay. have been shared like I, I you know to be i actually have ran into the pocket raptors already in uh, one of the fractals i believe it was fractal 12 the um oh, the pirate one uh siren's reef mm -hmm. yeah t112 yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, they, they kind of hurt. They, they do Just definitely a little kind bit. of hurt. Uh, guys, thank you so much for coming on to the podcast. I really appreciate everyone's time. Mm -hmm. um, and anyone who is watching this recorded, uh, make sure you check out their channels. They're great videos. I always have their, their stuff up when I'm uh, uh, working during the day. Uh, I actually just released a video about NPC replicas. I have 20, well, technically 21 NPC replicas on my account. Maybe that's worth checking out if you have some free time uh, and saying, uh, hey, Moopless, you definitely have a problem and should stop creating alternative characters. Um, but thank you very much, guys. I appreciate it. Have a great rest of your day. And as thank always, you. stay hydrated. Bye, everyone. Good call. Farewell. Take care.